Hey, what's up everyone, John of the Geek here. Welcome to this video where I'm gonna be testing out the $450 budget gaming Ryzen build that I did. And if you haven't seen that uh, system build, definitely check out the links in the description or in the little suggestion box that pops up here. And so basically what we're gonna be doing is uh, we're going to be looking at some gameplay and it's gonna be Overwatch. That's the only game that I'm gonna be playing here today. And so uh, we're going to also run some synthetic benchmarks on here. None of that really matters, honestly, but we're just gonna see what kind of a numbers increase that we get from going from bone stock, stock cooling and everything, and then upgrading some stuff and then benchmarking it again to see what we get. So which by the way, that's what I'm gonna also be doing in this video is doing some upgrades. So I'm gonna upgrade the cooling to an all-in-one water cooler. And then I'm also gonna upgrade the GPU. I'm also gonna add another stick of RAM and then uh, adding a hard drive to it. So uh, I'm doing that just to kind of give you an overall cost of what to expect later on in the future when upgrading this $450 system. I'm also gonna add on there the uh, keyboard and mouse right, that I've been using with this system, a mouse pad also, and then a uh, monitor as well. And then I'll talk a little bit about, you know, what, why I chose this monitor and why it works well with this particular system, because a lot of you had some great suggestions and questions in the build video about why did you use that video card? And then I'm gonna be showing you it's because of the monitor here. Okay, so for the monitor I'm using with this system is the Dell SE2717H slash HS. And it's a 75 hertz FreeSync monitor that I got from Office Depot for $130 a few months ago. You might find this model online for about $165 now, but I found a similar model at Costco for $150. Bucks. The keyboard, mouse, and mouse pad was all from Amazon. The keyboard is a Kumara Red Dragon with blue switches, and that was $30. The mouse is a TechNet gaming mouse, and that was $10. And I haven't been able to find the mouse pad again online, but uh, Amazon has a bunch of the same ones for around 10 bucks. All right, so adding the cost of a monitor, keyboard, mouse, and optional mouse pad, we're looking at an extra $200. Now, you don't necessarily have to get the exact same uh, monitor or keyboard or mouse or even mouse pad, but you can sort of find, or you should be able to find uh, comparable pieces uh, at the same price relatively close at least to around 200 bucks so you're looking at uh, adding the cost of a $450 system right with all of the peripherals and a monitor uh, with an extra $200 that uh, brings your grand total to 650 bucks for this system I'm only gonna run this RX 460 on stock factory overclock settings uh, because I was only able to overclock the thing by 10 megahertz and that's not even noticeable in any gameplay. Sorry for not having any gameplay audio. I was uh, only listening to the audio on my headphones because I didn't have a splitter. Uh, but anyways, as you can see here, I'm averaging about 69 frames per second on 1080p ultra settings with FreeSync on. Uh, if I lowered it to high settings, I could exceed 75 FPS easily. Next is the SSD benchmark, and I have been seeing inconsistent write speeds. This Drivo X1 Pro says it can do 500 megabytes for both read and write speeds, but the write speeds have, tests have been uh, kind of disappointing. The Fire Strike score is just over 5,000. Uh, the Cinebench got uh, 695 on the CPU and 81 FPS on the OpenGL tests. All right, so before I upgrade these parts, I basically wanted to show you the temperatures that I'm getting while overclocked and on stock cooling. So I'm overclocked here to 3.8 gigahertz at 1.3 volts, and the temperatures I'm getting are around 75 degrees Celsius. 
Now, I'm gonna leave the overclocks at this particular 3.8, 1.3 volts, because for some reason, and I have to figure this out, uh, I can't get it past, or I can't get Windows to report anything past 3.8 gigahertz. Now, in the UEFI, I'm able to overclock to four gigahertz and run the voltage all the way up to 1.4 if I wanted to, uh, but, it boots into Windows and then it just shows 3.2 gigahertz. And I don't know why, if it's a Windows thing, maybe I need to update something. I've got the latest motherboard BIOS and whatnot. So I haven't been able to figure out why it doesn't wanna show in Windows uh, anything higher than 3.2 uh, once I try to overclock past 3.8, right? But it shows 3.8 just fine. And it overclocks, it uh, uh, runs Prime 95, and it's stable, yada, 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 all that stuff, just fine, right? So I don't know what it is, uh, maybe I broke something, I don't know. But nonetheless, we're gonna keep it at 3.8 gigahertz, and uh, after upgrading the cooling, we're gonna see how far does it drop from 75 degrees Celsius. So let's get right into it. Okay, let's talk about the upgrade parts. The all-in-one liquid cooler I'm using is the Corsair H60. Right now, you can find it on Newegg for $55 after a mail-in rebate. It also fits right out of the box with the stock AM4 uh, mounting brackets. The extra RAM was 50 bucks and it's an OEM pull from eBay. Honestly though, you could skip the extra RAM because it's not worth it for the gameplay. The GPU is the RX 480. Uh, that was about $200 when it launched. Yes, of course, you should get the 470 or the 570 uh, if you're gonna use a 60 or 75 Hertz monitor like mine. Uh, but if you really wanted to upgrade to the kind of a max settings here, you could get the 580 for the same price as a 480. Uh, all I had on me was a 400 series cards when I made this video. The extra storage drive is a Western Digital one terabyte drive, and that's usually like around 50 bucks. So with the AIO cooler in place, the CPU dropped by about 20 degrees Celsius, which is a huge improvement. Again, it's overclocked at 3.8 gigahertz, 1.3 volts. Now on to some more gameplay. With the RX 480 installed, the settings were changed to epic 1080p, and the average frame rates was about 91 FPS. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so the last bit of gameplay that I wanted to show you guys here is a doing a sort of a demo of like a live stream. So this isn't really a live stream. I'm recording, doing a live recording using XSplit. And so by doing this, it does put uh, more stress onto the CPU, meaning uh, it has to use a CPU to uh, do the gameplay as well as capture and compress the video. Uh, for uh, live streaming, sending it out, right? So the CPU here will probably hit around uh, 80 to 90 percent, maybe even hitting uh, 100 percent. The GPU, of course, is going to work as hard as it can and do 100 percent as well. And so we'll see the CPU here fluctuate in between 50, at least 50 to uh, 80 percent in between there. And this, the GPU here will continue 
to be able to output to 80 to 90 frames per second and so uh, in case you're wondering the uh, se settings here is uh, 1080p 75 Hertz and uh, epic settings same kind of deal that we had um, before and so uh, as you can see here we're still hitting uh, 80 uh, frames per second and uh, it's still pretty good it's got free sync going on right now and I'm recording I'm only recording at 1920 by 1080 uh, 30 frames per second right because my whole recording footage is going to be 30 frames so that's what I'm recording at anyways um, I know that uh, many of you here uh, want to see an Intel build uh, and I do have that coming down the pipe. I am going to be using a uh, Intel B something B250 I think it is with the G4560. It's a very popular gaming CPU here. Oh jeez. And, oh man. And, um, that build's going to be coming up. It's going to use almost identical parts. However, the CPU, motherboard, and GPU obviously are going to be different. The GPU I'm actually going to showcase in that build video is going to be the uh, 1050 Ti, right, versus the 460. Or I really kind of would match up the 1050 Ti with the uh, 560 instead. Uh, so, um, geez. I am just terrible at this game while trying to talk at the same time. Uh, so yeah, in conclusion, do you really need to do all of these upgrades that I did? No, not really. Not for gameplay anyways. The GPU should just be upgraded to probably a 570, right? That's about it. Uh, however, if you get a better monitor that has much more frame rates, such as um, a 144Hz monitor with uh, FreeSync, then by all means definitely get a uh, 580 uh, so that you can get all that. Oh, oh, geez. Swim away. Swim away. No. Um, get a 580 if you're going to have a 144Hz monitor, which I do also plan on having. Uh, as well with this system just to see what what I can get me down, or how it looks but um, the reason why I upgraded this system to the max is that I want to do a little bit more than gameplay I want to do some content creation and benchmark that to see how well it performs for a budget video editing rig uh, uh, so stay tuned for that as well um, and yeah that's pretty much it Thanks for watching y'all. Definitely leave your comments and questions down below. Hopefully I'll be able to get to them. Uh, subscribe to my channel, yada yada, all that jazz. Uh, leave all the hate comments for Ryzen as well. That boosts my uh, search results up. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching y'all. See you in the next one. Uh, come get some. Ouch. Ouch. Uh. Peace.